Hello everybody, welcome to IT Skills. My name is Aiden and welcome to the video. This is the second part of the video or the third part. I can't remember, I've been doing so many VMware videos, but ultimately I am just trying to show you. So this video is all about getting our our hypervisor to do something like this where we can install server OS or any OS, import iOS ISOs, so the server looks like something like this and uh, we can also have other things going on so you can see here on this session over here i have like a uh, my vm you know server 2022 installed on this vm and i'm gonna do the same thing over there so the whole idea is for you guys to see from start to finish how this is all work coming together so this is a older you know vmware host i configured already and we're gonna try to make our second host similar to this so that's what we're going to do so we're going to need to switch it over this is our hypervisor it's just named something simple really and i just named it it skills and ni ni1 which is nuke one and then this is the it skills and two nuke two so now the first thing we're going to need to do is here is we need to create a new data store so you can see here it's showing our first ssds you know which is our main install of the VMware, you know, hypervisor, we need to go ahead new database. Actually, instead of new database, cancel that. We're gonna need to go to devices. Click on here. This we have one. We have one terabyte that's not used right now. And so we're gonna need to click on this. We need to create a new data store, and we're gonna name this one. So I'm just simply gonna name this one. I teach. You know, storage, VM, slash ISO. That's what we're going to store that. And here it's telling me, like, what how the disk will be formatted. And I'm going to just basically keep this the same way. If I wanted to, I could come over here and do something else. But right now, in fact, I'm going to say use the full disk, actually. Let's do that. So instead of a partitioning like that, I'm just going to say use the full disk. So let's just sit next and finish. Are you sure this will replace anything in you have in there? I am fine. So this is gonna go ahead format, do the formatting. You can see it's running over here. That's one thing that's lovely about VMware is that everything you do, it's always like a, you know running, showing you a progress. It's almost like a, you know keeping you in check so that you're not just doing something and it tells you if it's completed or failed. And usually if you do everything right, it should just be completed. Now, if you go to the, my storage, you can see I have two of them. I have my main storage and I have my local. If I go to data store, for example, you see the main storage. This is basically, you know, instead of main storage, actually, I'm just going to say ESXi8 install. So that's what is going to be named. So that means I'm not going to put any ISO or VMs on here. I'm only going to keep my VMs and ISO in here. That's the whole plan. The next thing we're going to have to do is the networking. We don't have to do a whole lot. Everything is pretty much configured. We could do virtual networking. You know, you could do, you know, add physical network. You could do other things. But right now, I don't mess with the network. It's good. There's, there's a famous saying, if it ain't broken, don't fix it in the networking section. And this is a, a lab after all. So I'm not trying to overcomplicate it. And so the next thing we're going to need to do is like the licensing. So the licensing is interesting, right? So you can see here my licensing is 60 days evaluation right now. It's, like it's going to expire. And I can go ahead and activate the same license. I already act used this license already to activate it. I can get the, another, the same license again and try to activate it. So you can see here. In fact, did he already activate it? Oh, yeah, he didn't activate it. So we need to go ahead to you know, hope manage licensing. I already activated this. Let me see what happens when I try to activate another host with the same license. I might get, I may, you may tell me get out of here, but I'm going to try. It's, it is, this channel is all about trying. It's all about getting, you know, things to work. It's all about experimenting. So let's go ahead and actually, I'm just going to go ahead, eval. Where is it? Here it is. There you go. That's the URL link. I always, you know, looked like uh, I struggled to get to the URL, but you have to just basically search for Product Evaluation Center for VMware Hypervisor 8. And then over here, you're going to go to License. I'm not signed in right now. Let me sign in. 
signing with my credentials. So yeah, so now I come from here on, I'm just gonna go to the evaluation again. Just like I already have the website, the your evaluation saved. So it's just gonna be vmware.com slash en slash evaluation. That's what it is. So I'm just gonna come over here and here's my hypervisor license. I'm gonna copy this again. This is gonna probably tell me, go screw yourself because I use the license already on another hypervisor. So let's paste this in and check the license. Oh, wow, it's, it looks like it's working. So I evaluate, I have activated the license again and I did it in both servers. So I did it on, under here. If I go manage or host rather, you can see it doesn't have an issue with the license. I also did it under here too. So it looks like uh, that's good. So you see, it's, it's the evaluation is not going to expire on this one, on this host and in and one. And it's not going to expire on this other one, which is good. So that we did activate the license. So next thing we need to do is create a VM. So this is what we're going to need to do. So come over here. And... Uh, you know, we don't have to do any other configuring, as you can see, just simply creating a VM now. So we're going to go ahead. So now we're going to go ahead and do that. So to go to do the create a new VM is going to be, you know, go to the virtual machine section on your XAI host and then come over here, create a slash register VM. But before we do that, we need to upload the ISO to the VM. So that way we need to have ISOs that we can actually use as a VMs. So we're going to come over here to the you know, IT skill storage, VM slash ISO database. We're gonna browse the database. We're gonna call, create a folder, create a directory, call Windows. So we're just gonna create that and we're gonna under this ISO over here, we're gonna come over here, we're gonna upload. I have a couple ISOs over here. Some of them are new, some of them are not new. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in server 2022 ISO over here. I should probably download the latest server 2022, but that's fine, it is what it is. And I'm also gonna go ahead and upload a secondary ISO for client OS, which is gonna be Windows 11. Do I have a latest Windows 11 downloaded? No, but this is fine, this will do. So I'm just gonna put those two ISO there. So you can see the progress bar for when you do the ISO and it's going to take some time, but not that long. If you're using uh, SSDs, which in this case I am, in this case, I'm actually using MVME. So it's actually going to be even faster. You also can see the progress bar over here. It tells you what it's doing with each ISO. And it's amazing to see that. One ISO is already done, so they're just doing the second one. They're not exactly small files, as you can see here. All right, both of them are complete successfully. So now we can go to the VMs or virtual machine, virtual machines, and click on create slash register VM. We're going to go ahead, new VM. And we're going to go ahead, call this one server 2022. On the guest family is going to be Windows and it's going to be Windows 11. By selecting this, it will actually make it to where it's actually going to do what it needs to do for Windows 11 or any OS you select. It will do the right specs for you. You don't have to worry about that. If you don't want that, you can always change it, customize it yourself. Hit next. Now it's going to tell me where you want to store this VM. I'm going to store it in the VM and ISO section where I did say that. And I'm going to hit this. You see how we selected like uh, the hard drive, the memory. It's already selected everything. So I don't have to do anything. And so, but if I don't want the memory to be, or the hard drive to be that much, I can change it. So I'm just going to want the hard drive to be 70 gig, to be honest with you, because I actually don't do a whole lot. I'm running a couple servers, but it's fine. And then the storage is, you know, logic says, and I'm going to go ahead to the drop down menu, go to the, on the disk slash CD slash DVD drive, go to database ISO file. And I'm going to go ahead, choose my windows ISO. So where is the other one? 
Oh, uh, it's only showing me. Okay, here it is. It is Windows ISO. Yeah, and then here it is. So we're gonna choose Server 2022. Select, and I'm gonna hit next. If I'm good with this, if I'm not good with this, I can change it later on. So I'm gonna gonna because I'm running only 30 gigabyte of my of my memory. I'm gonna change this to 600 megs. So that way I don't 600 megabytes. So equals 6 gigs. So I'm gonna change to 6 gigs. I'm gonna go ahead and finish it, and it's gonna tell you what it's doing. So it's literally already created already. So all I have to do now is click in here, and then I'm gonna have to press like any key to boot to it. So I'm just gonna click press here. There you go. That's it. I mean, now it's just a matter of waiting game, right? Installing the OS, simple thing we did already with a lot of hypervisor, Hyper-V, Nutanix, you name it. And this is similar to even VirtualBox, you know, if you use VirtualBox or VMware Workstation. So, and then here you just choose your what server OS you want to. And then I'm going to click on I accept. Custom. You don't have to do any driver or anything like that. It just knows. VMware just knows because they are always understanding and have a good relationship with Microsoft. So this is basically the waiting game right now. And we will wait. And we will definitely wait. Over here is just simply putting your admin password. And hitting OK or finish. All right, so this is done. Now what we need to do is just log in by coming to the guest OS and send the keys to control delete. Put in our credential. There you go. We are in and we're able to, you know, our server is great. Doesn't have any network issues, nothing whatsoever. It works native, almost natively, almost too good to be true. And if I go like full screen mode, you won't even notice there's any issue. Like I'm running this on a, on my Intel Nuke. It just looks natively flawless. And obviously there's a lot of housekeeping I can do in here. But for now, the whole idea of the video was to start from installation to, or actually rather configuring what we need to do to get the VM installed and installing the VM. That's all we had to do. So thanks for watching. Hopefully this was helpful and hopefully this will help you get your lab going if you're lying, trying to use VMware on your home lab using your Intel look. This will be a good lab, good video for you. Thank you for watching. Take care. Please like, subscribe, support us. It will help us a lot in the channel. You know, if YouTube algorithm, YouTube is actually making it hard for other people to see these videos because we're not, we're not as big channel, so... We don't get a lot of people, you know, look at this channel like that. So if you like, at least, you know, even though it's not like a whole lot from you, it will help us tremendously so we can try to grow as a channel. And we want more people to see this so they can actually, you know, do this labs for themselves and get their IT career going properly. So, yeah, that would mean a lot if you can hit the like button for us. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of the day.